All right, welcome everybody. This is Market Peak. This is Tuesday, February 9th in the evening. Matt's in the car. Say hello, Matt. So, uh, we're, hello, Matt. Please hit the, yeah, right. so please hit the subscribe button to stay in the know about trends and trades and what's going on with the stocks that we pick. Uh, the last two stocks we picked are up about 50% each in the last week alone. So uh, just want to say it's a good time to get on. So one of the main, uh, the actual main stock that we're going to be talking about this week is Natural Shrimp, SHMP. Another one that we're looking into, we're really excited about. Matt's going to be talking about the VIX, going to be talking about SPG uh, and XLF as well. Uh, we are not financial advisors. None of this is financial advice. Definitely consult your professional before making any trades. That's for sure. So real quick, just jump into my portfolio here. As you can see, um, I'm slowly moving stuff over Fidelity. That's why I got a little bit of cash over here. Try to move it over all at once. It got blocked. Fidelity says it's Robinhood. I haven't called Robinhood or even emailed them to find out. I'm just going to sell some stuff and move it over. Um, but Space, uh, which is the one of the ones that I've been following, once again, they have their test flight coming out this Saturday. The last week, they're up about 13%. Not too bad. Uh, Sundial, that was our feature last week. Um, and as you can see, if I go to the week here, up 50% in the last week. So they are in the cannabis sector. Cannabis is so hot right now. Uh, and as you can see, it's a pretty nice price. So definitely, definitely a good time to get in. Getting in now, probably a good idea. Yeah. Um, especially with uh, legalization, potentially Chuck on Schumer, the table. He said he had something on the table yeah. within a couple of weeks, a few weeks. So that should be... Somewhere in the next two two weeks, really, because that was a couple of weeks ago already. Yeah, the uh, U.S. domestic market is going to present opportunities that the Canadian domestic market, um, you know, can't. Sure. We're a bigger market. The United States, we're in the United States, you and I. Um, Plus, if we don't have to is, import it, you know, that, that definitely helps a yeah. little bit as well. Yeah, yeah. And that's a lot you about know, natural so, shrimp. We're going to be talking about lack of needing to import. Okay. Okay. I'm excited. Yeah, dude, dude, this one, this one, <laughs> this one's a doozy for, for sure. So, okay. So BLSP, once again, we spoke about it last week. It's up, it's up quite a bit. Uh, and it's one of those ones that actually was up 50% since we spoke about it literally what on Sunday. So really excited about that one. Sundial we already mentioned. So, and, and, you know, jumping into our quick news. So Tesla bought a bunch of Bitcoin and they're saying Tesla bought it. Some are saying it's Elon Musk. I guess they're kind of interchangeable. So, I mean, and, and he's getting a little bit of scrutiny for that and he feels like he's going to get scrutiny for that. Why do you think that would be? Because Elon Musk has a history of, um, you know, provoking the market. Sure. He has a history with the SEC um, he has a lot of Twitter followers, meaning he has the capability, uh, to influence, um, you know, the direction of certain trades, um, of certain stocks that he may mention by name, um, you know, give compliments to. So sure. he's a guy who can move markets. He's popular. He's a hero among many retail investors. And, um, when he decides to get into Bitcoin, uh, there's a reason. Sure. Um, that reason to cynics might have something to do with, uh, you know, price manipulation. They might think he's in it to, you know, um, one point five billion. Pump and dump scheme. It's a big. It's a big <laughs> yeah. amount, and Bitcoin jumped up quite a bit because of it. That's yeah. for sure. Um, or you know, some some optimists may just say, well, maybe this is him showing up late to the party. Maybe he just he sees something. Um, some potential in this asset, and he figures that now is a better time to jump in than any. I mean, sure. Um, so I mean, how do you feel about it? Do you think Elon Musk jumping in is a good sign? Do you are you bullish right now over the next couple of weeks? I, I am. I mean, on on Bitcoin, I'm, I'm, as far as I'm price action, definitely sir, yeah. definitely bullish. Uh, it's it's a pretty big deal. Uh, the fact that somebody so I mean, he mentions Dogecoin, and and look what happens to that. So, but the thing is, it's just one of those things, man. I mean, people have been talking about it going to a hundred thousand for the longest time. And whenever, you know, whenever I've heard, it, I'm pretty sure the same with you, like psh, whatever, a hundred thousand. But now that it's at 46, it's like, yeah, man, I mean, maybe, but I just, I just, I just feel like sooner or later, it's got to start coming down again. 
I think we go up. I think so too. I think, we go up I think so too. At least for a little while. Okay, so something that Matt and I kind of prepared for you. It's five reasons you may be losing money in the stock market. So and this is something that that we've been kind of thinking about for for a while, and definitely things on this list that you know you might not consider. So we just kind of wanted to uh, throw them out there for you. So number one, selling the dips, which we've all done. That is for sure. And just to give you a really recent um, example on my end is this whole Dogecoin thing. So, and Matt, I didn't tell you this story. So let me pull Dogecoin up here just so we could have it. Oh, I got shaken out of Dogecoin too. Did you really? I sold uh, at like five cents okay. off that balance. Dogecoin US dollar. There we go. So I as you can see, cents. and let me go, yeah. what's that? It's eight cents right now, right? Uh, right now it's at, it's seven point one cents. So what I did okay. was this cool guy right here bought it way up here, um, like almost right around. I don't know. Wait, is this the five day? Never mind. Let me back up. Okay. So this cool guy bought it right here, about seven point one cents. This was when it first jumped up. And then, of course, what happened after that just started sinking. And I was like, oh, God, it's going back it's up. Dumped. And then it just got completely dumped. And when I saw it falling like a rock, which is in the same day, like I sold it at 0.25 cents. And sure enough, up and then down a little bit, then up more and then down a little bit, then just straight up, you know, and actually matched out a point, you know, 8.6 cents. Um, and then uh, it's a prime example. You know, I think, I, I don't know, it was like a thousand bucks, maybe 1500 bucks. It wasn't that much. But, you know, I just thought I'd ride the wave. If it explodes, cool. If not, no big deal. And perfect example, you know, selling the dip when I could have just held on, had a little bit more faith. That's, that's what happens, right? You see, you get an impulsive move one way or the other, up or down. Um, you get excited. You get nervous. Um, you feel like you're missing out, right? Um, so you FOMO into that trade. Sure. Right. Or in some cases, FOMO out. I think for me, <laughs> I think for me, it was like, it was at the point where I was like, all right, you know, like, will it get any worse? Maybe not. Will it get much better? Probably not. Could it get a little bit better? Maybe. Let me just sell it here and cut my losses. That was kind of like my thought process. And I remember it was like, you know, I was out at the park, just kind of walking around and just couldn't stop staring. I was staring at it like all freaking day. I was like, just sell it, get rid of it, cut your losses. So a little bit of peace of mind there. Crypto trades fast. Altcoins trade uh, really fast, particularly altcoins available on Robinhood with low caps. Yes, yeah. yeah, and that was another one that actually um, got capped. So the Robinhood wouldn't let you, would only let you get like so much at one point. So and, and crypto is all market night caps long, trading volume. all weekend. Yeah. It just never stops. Yeah, so it's easy for a bunch of people to come in, pump the stock, and then dump it. Hundred percent. And that's kind of what's been happening. That's what happened. That's what happened with Dogecoin. Yeah. I mean, that looks like a pump and dump to me. Um, you had a crazy impulse move up, uh, got a lot of buyers into it, um, peaked out, had like a more than greater than 50% correction in yeah. a matter of uh, hours. So, and that, that, you know, that could actually lead into number two, and that's being late to the party. So, you know, I, th I don't think I was late to the party on this one, but GameStop, a lot of people, a lot of people were late to the party. So what ended up happening is, you know, you have a situation where, you know, I mean, people from other countries, you see them on Wall Street bets, I'm in this country and I'm buying in. It's like, it's already like three, four hundred dollars. You know, it's, it's just too late and they buy it. And then the freaking, that's what happened with Bitcoin. Last time it went up, members like 20, 22,000. You know, this was like three, four years ago. Every This is when you and I were working in the same establishment and every single person's buying in and it just like fell out. So, you know. 2017. Be, yeah, yeah. Recognizing being late to the party, you just have to realize at a certain point, uh, the risk isn't going to be worth the reward. And when GameStop was three or $400, I feel like that was, that was it. Yeah, and it's so funny. You think that, like a 300 to 400 percent move up would make people think that maybe the trade has, you know, out, you know, has worn itself out. Yeah. Run its course. You think? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Instead, you had a ton of FOMOers jump in, jump on the bandwagon, um, expecting, you know, outsized returns. Um, 
only to be disappointed. Yeah. Well, but you know, that's, that's the nature of bankrupt. That's definitely the nature of options. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, I hope, I hope people weren't bankrupted by I that hope, trade, but I hope, you know, sure. people probably were. Yeah. I, definitely. hundred percent people were. So, you know, if, if listen, at a certain point, you know, if it's been if it's been like on an insane, ridiculous run for like two weeks, three weeks, you know, it might be time to 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 at least wait for a pullback and then kind of maybe jump in. Because there are people when GameStop was peaking and it pulled back to like 150, 180 bucks, people bought back in and jumped up to 300. So, you know, but if if you know, just just don't be late to the party, folks. And number three, second guessing. Re- yep. Go ahead. Re- really quickly. There's a saying in regards to being late to the party. By the time you hear about it, it's already too late. That could be. I mean, by the you time know, you hear about it, it's except for the except for the recommendations that we make on this show. So, but oh yeah, 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 yeah except for that. No, but honestly, if it's like hit, like there's a good way to caveat what you're saying. If 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 you hear it on like national news. It's yeah, probably, it's, yeah, then it's probably too late. But, you know, if, and if you do your research and you get on market twits or, you know, even Wall Street bets and you see some stuff going on and all that, then, you know, I would say, in, in, you know, shows like ours, let's face it, we, you know, we're doing the research, we're putting it out. This, you know, the other stuff that we're covering isn't mainstream at all. So, and in number three, second guessing. And this, this was, this is perfect for the Dogecoin story because I put it in there. What the thought is, I'm going to put it in there. I'm just going to let it ride and fuck it. You know, it was, it was enough, you know, 1500 bucks. Like I can afford it, you know, and, and I saw it dipping and I should have just let it fucking sit there because right now I wouldn't be thinking, I would actually be a little more than breaking even, but I'd be having a great time watching this thing go up instead of sitting here feeling like an idiot because I couldn't just let it sit there, which is what my intentional plan was because I second guessed myself. This is where technical analysis can play a big role uh, in helping you. Technical analysis you know, coin. <laughs> so what I mean by That's that true. is if, if you dedicate yourself to a semi like long time frame, say like you're only looking at the daily chart, right or the monthly chart and you analyze trend based on that longer t- time frame um you won't have to worry about right the minute to minute hour to hour fluctuations of price sure right because you know that you've based the trade on a longer time frame True. that you're assuming that your outcome is going to have time to play I can't out can't help it though right? The, I know because because you get emotional because it's your money. Yeah, and but also if, a lot of this money say, I make pays the bills right yeah, now. If if you say that Apple's going to be at three hundred dollars uh, in a year, who cares if it if it loses twenty dollars like the next day? But yeah, right? I just got this call on you know, Sundial. Chart, I'm going to be looking at yeah. that thing every freaking day, even though it doesn't matter yeah. until March. You know? Yeah you you gotta you gotta dedicate yourself to a particular time frame. Um, and you have to have the discipline to look at trend from a time perspective. It's true. Price matters, but time matters a lot too. A lot of these trades take time to unfold. Your price target isn't just going to be reached magically whenever you want it. A lot of people, though, um, they, it's going to be hard. They've gotten used to short, quick gains. Like the market right now, especially if you're getting to certain stocks, especially the ones that we've been talking about, it's like you're getting 50% in like a week. So people definitely have started to lose the patience that you're saying it requires. And you're absolutely right. You do your research. You have a sound foundation for why you invested. You shouldn't even have to think about going out because you really did the research and you believe it's going to go up. Dogecoin, bandwagon, it's a tough one. So number four, doubling down. So this is when you're losing money. Let's say Bitcoin's dumping and it could have worked in the, or, or even Dogecoin's dumping and it could have worked in this sense you buy more, you know, but that did happen with a lot of people in GameStop. You know, it went down like, I'm buying more, I'm buying the dip and blah, blah, blah. And unfortunately, a lot of those people just ended up, you know, in the crypto world, we say holding the bag and that's exactly what happened. So it's it's about learning when to cut your losses and not doubling down at a really catastrophic point in time. Yeah, yeah. So your strategy should definitely, like you, like you said, revolve more so around cutting losses, right? Um, 
how much loss is too much loss. You should have a number in your head every time, right before you enter a trade. Think about it. What's my cut and run number? Sure. And, you know, try and dedicate yourself to it. Try and stay disciplined. Um, if you, if you dollar cost average, right, into uh, a trade that's already lost money, right, what makes you think that that's actually going to help you recoup your losses, right? If the trade, so if, if the trade doesn't work out and you're down 30%, for instance, right? And you just have this feeling that the trade isn't going to work out, right? Um, and you and you double down, right? You, you keep scaling in because you're angry, right? You're going to lose all that money. And this goes you're right going into to number five, trading on emotion. This is number five, trading on emotion. Please continue because that's exactly where we are right now. Yeah, rage trading. You're mad, right? You want to double down. Um, We're not going to let these, them do this to us. Because Dogecoin is up 50% uh, that morning. You wake up and say, I got to get in. I'm, I'm missing out on something. What happens if it's up 100% in two hours? I'll miss that. I'll miss a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You didn't miss a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. There are always trades. You don't need to invest every single minute of every single day. If you find yourself getting emotional, calm down, do something else, pull out all your money and think, think, take a look at a larger time frame, go to a monthly chart, right? Look at the trend, see where it's actually headed. Think about what's going on in the macro universe. Think about what's going on in the news, how politics is going to impact that trade, right? How what other people are doing in that industry, in that space, how that's going to impact the trade. Think about demand. Do you see demand increasing for whatever product this, you know, stock company is offering? Like, do some thinking, sure. right? All right. So, our, uh, any last minute thoughts before we move on? I hope that your um, natural shrimp trade is... Uh, going to work is, out um, well let's going to be discussed let's, yeah we're going to do it right now so and, and i've never heard of this company. i know I, i'm genuinely excited yeah i kept this one for myself so i do a lot of research and i yeah, i do follow I love the name yeah natural shrimp so this is interesting so uh not hiding anything shmp yeah i know right as opposed to unnatural shrimp but you'll find out exactly <laughs> why they call themselves that so just a really quick little tidbit before we get in. The United States is a minor agriculture producer, aqua, sorry, aquaculture producer. So basically farmed uh, shellfish and fish and stuff like that. Anything in the water, you know, it could be trout, whatever. Uh, ranked 16th in 2016, but it's a leading global importer of aquatic protein. By value, nearly 90% of the seafood we eat comes from abroad. 90%. Over half of it is aquaculture. So- over half of the stuff we import is being bred in some sort. It could be in cages out in the water. Uh, it could be in big facilities and stuff like that. Uh, and what's interesting about what they do is they do it more natural. They don't need any chemicals. They don't need any of this. And they have a facility. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but they have a facility in Iowa to grow shrimp, like smack dab in the middle of nowhere, Iowa. And because of the technology that they have, uh, I really feel like they're gonna they're gonna start taking over natural shrimp. S H M P. A publicly traded this from their website. Publicly traded aqua tech company has developed patented proprietary technology pr to produce fresh gourmet grade shrimp without the use of antibiotics, probiotics, or toxic chemicals. So the company was originally founded in 2001. They really just wanted to promote doing uh, and selling natural shrimp, but they've actually transitioned and started uh, a new company that has technology to do it, you know, here in America. So we have to import it and as naturally as pro possible without any type of issues with chemicals and needing filters and stuff to filter out the water. So, and they use uh, vibro suppression technology solution against infectious agents that help exclude and suppress harmful organisms. So, you know, bacteria and oh. stuff like that. So what's interesting, so this is uh, this natural aquatic system. This is the new company that they started, uh, started in 2017. They're co-owners, well, they're the majority owner. So, and what it does is it basically uses electricity 
to energize the water, which kills the bacteria. It made the technology, doesn't exist anywhere else. They patented it. And because they founded a different country, company, you know, this could technically be licensed out or other people could, you know, use the technology for them. So, all right, why are we doing this? Why do we, why do we like the stock? Number one, dude, it's shrimp. Like, do you like shrimp? Uh, you're not, you're not allergic, shrimp. are you? I love shrimp. Okay. God, if you were allergic to shrimp, shrimp, that would be awful for my argument. There are people that are, but it, I mean, shrimp is just awesome. And it's- Even if I was allergic, I would still acknowledge the value role shrimp plays in, um, you know, the, the American diet. Big I time. say value because if you like seafood, and most people do, and you don't want to break the bank, shrimp's probably the way to go. Yeah, you can you know, You can buy it, it frozen, and it doesn't taste half bad. Put it on a freaking right? kebab, you know? I mean, it's just one of the more, if you want, like, you know, uh, unlike canned fish of any kind, shrimp is probably the one that's going to be just about anywhere, for sure. And you know what's weird? This this is a kind of getting sidetracked here, sure. but you ever gone to, like, one of these cheap buffets? And gone to the seafood section and just everything looks gross. And then you eat some fried shrimp, expecting it just to be like really terrible. Yeah. And it's not. No. Especially you get like, the coconut shrimp. Oh my goodness, bro. Yeah. Coconut shrimp. It's hard to do shrimp wrong. Yeah. It, like, it's almost impossible. I mean, really, it really is almost impossible. So another reason we like it, no bacteria. So in 2015, Consumer Reports conducted their own testing and found 16% of cooked Ready to eat shrimp had bacteria, including uh, Vibrio and E. coli. Vibrio was found in many shrimp samples, the most common cause of food poisoning from eating raw oysters. So, can you imagine? 16% consumer reports, okay? So, and that's just because it lives in these tanks where they farm everything. And what ends up happening is, you know, the bacteria gets in there. So even like, you know, you have a bunch of shrimp in like a big freaking cage or net or whatever, and all of them are going to produce bacteria. Bacteria is not going to like, you know, it's going to stay in the area because, hey, there's plenty of shrimp around here. So, but once, once again, the way they actually have it is uh, the way they've done it with natural aquatic systems here is they have the technology basically, you know, I'm really, really shortening the, the, the signs, but adds electricity to the water, which kills the bacteria. So no antibiotics, no probiotics, no toxic chemicals whatsoever. In fact, when you pull seafood out of the ocean, a lot of times they dip it. I think it's sodium trichlorate or trichloride. And what that does is it acts as, you know, to kind of kill bacteria and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about any of that. So, and another really big thing that's important about this company, which, you know, obviously I like the most, they're growing really, really fast. So Dallas, Texas, this is February 2nd, 2021. This is a week ago. This came out. Natural Shrimp Inc., SH, uh, SHMP, once again, uh, the Aquatech company that has developed and patented the first commercially operated RAS, which is Recirculating Aquaculture System, stocked four of the nursery tanks in which the newly constructed Lacoste, Texas production facility in January uh, will have post larvae. So post larvae is after the larvae stage, so the little baby shrimp. And what they do is they grow them for a little bit, and then they move them into bigger tanks where they mature, and then they sell them off. And the way they have it set up, there's going to be a rotation. So it's always gonna, they're going to have shrimp year-round. So, and let's see. And basically what they're doing in Texas is the final testing phase just to make sure everything works perfectly before they really start to move forward with this and commercialize this. They have a new one in Iowa. Remember I mentioned uh, Web Webster, Iowa. There's about 350,000 square feet of production that we will have in Webster City. It will be called Natural Shrimp Iowa, uh, shared, uh, shared Easterling. So Easterling is the gentleman who's the president of the company. Uh, it looks like we're going to go with the final contract in Puerto Rico, uh, adding that the company is also working on an additional contract with a California-based plant. Uh, we also just signed a joint venture agreement with Florida that will be going after a $25 million grant that has been lined up by our own lobbyists, and the company expends to sh uh, expand the Lacoste in Texas uh, with an additional facility. So... I don't know. I like the What's stock. The price? What's that? What's the price? So that's a good question. Let's go over to the price. So the price is eighty-one cents right now. And if you what's its market cap? So market cap is four hundred thirty-two million. Sorry, can that be right? Four hundred thirty-two million. Yeah, four hundred thirty-two million. Yeah. Yeah. So Some if you look at million. the five-day, bro, five days ago was forty-six cents. It's almost doubled in five yeah. days. Yeah, so, stuff is significant. I would actually put a call on this one on Robinhood, but Robinhood's not trading, and unfortunately, like, 
Those of you who have Robin Hood, like I said, I'm going to keep some stuff in Robin Hood. It is a beautiful platform. I'll probably use it for puts and calls. Um, but a lot of the, like the stuff, if you want to get, you know, early, early, early on, you just, you know, get yourself a, another one. TD Ameritrade. I'm going to use Fidelity. Um, Blue Sphere, I can't get on TD. I like TD. Yeah, you like TD? Well, I can get yeah. Blue Sphere on TD. I cannot get Blue Sphere on Fidelity. So TD Ameritrade gives you more action, you know, some stuff you can't get elsewhere. But TD Ameritrade also blocked the amount of shares. So I'm keeping, so did Robinhood for GameStop, whatever. Keeping Robinhood, going to keep TD Ameritrade for like the penny stocks and Fidelity in case another one starts popping off. I know they're not going to restrict what I got. So that's that's it. That's my argument. What do you think? Having never heard anything about the stock. I'm, I'm pretty interested. Um, the technology seems like it has a lot of potential. The price... Um, and technical setup seem, you know, attractive. So and the patents, are, that's what's really, really huge. You know, they have a patent on this technology. So I, I don't know how much that's really could protect them in in the real world and with people. I don't know how it works with technology. You just change mm -hmm. like a little thing and you can call it yours. But patent, yeah, yeah, but I mean that that's what's really important about this because you know they can use this and like I they said, can license yeah, patents. exactly. Yeah, the they can yeah. revolutionize the Do entire they have a system. Plan for that? The, yeah. Well, yeah. Has a CEO, I think at this point, no, I think about. at this point, from what I've read, um, right now they just you know they just want to get this thing rocking and rolling. And they had a that's what I would want to say. They did a yeah. test in 2019. It was in Norway, thousand employees. It was like the largest and one of the most respected like aquamarine testing facilities because here's where the expansion comes in. They were testing for salmon, for rockfish. So they plan on, you know, if they can get it working with shrimp, you know, they ex plan to expand into other things. And salmon's one of the worst. We all know what happens with salmon, the mercury. And, you know, we refuse to eat uh, farm salmon in, in this house. You know, even if I wanted to, there's no way Elena would let it happen anyway, which is fine. Um, but like, we just, you know, <laughs> but I think, I think it's, I think it's great. Like if they could expand into other fish as well, like it, it's just, it's 81 cents. It's like the, the thing is just popping off. And if I go back to all at one point, it was, it was, uh, it was like 10 bucks. Um, can I go back further? So yeah, at one point it was 10 bucks. If you actually go back far enough, it's not showing it here. So, but yeah, man, that, that's, that's the one I got, man. I think that's, that's the, that's the play. So I got let's some. Track it. Let's let's give them an update on that uh, in a month. Yeah, see, I mean we'll probably update it in a week, like we did with BLSP and with um, no. what is it? Uh, if it's eighty cents, I mean you might you might see some interesting price action given what's been going on lately with small caps. Big time, big time, and it's it's you know this is the month. All Should of a sudden, you know, tomorrow. it's it's going up, yeah. and it's just one of those things, just slowly climbing up, slowly climbing up, and this. This recent thing, like I said, just came out February 2nd, talking about Texas. They interviewed the guy. He was talking about Iowa, talking about Puerto Rico, yeah, you know, yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. Florida. Like They're making moves, man. And the fact that they have the patents, that's the most important thing about this. They own and develop the technology, you know, and they have, I think it's Hydrosynthesis. You know, it's 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 a company that they partnered with, but they're majority owner of the company that, that, has, the, that has the patent. So, all right, are we ready, right. Uh, ready to move on? Any last minute thoughts? No, I mean the, the stock sounds like an interesting long-term play, actually, based on yeah. how you, you know you've kind of described it. Um, Big time. And I mean, if if they have the patent technology, and you know, I'm assuming they have some sort of plan as far as licensing um, is concerned. And uh, once you know, I don't know what kind of partnerships they have with big box retail outlets, sure. but like, you know, I just, we'll 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 see. Eighty cents. Eighty eighty one cents right now. Like I said, Texas, not? <laughs> they're doing it right now. It's the last testing phase. Once that's done, then they can just really just start opening the opening the floodgates. So opening the aquariums. All right, so let's move into three charts with Matt. So we're going to go ahead and start with the VIX here. So we're always going to be starting with the VIX. And uh, let me get out the five-day. Actually, let me get out the month because we've been keep saying it's going to go down. It's going to go down. Over the weekend, we said it's going to keep going down. Uh, no, we actually, we, we thought it was going to go up, but realistically, it actually, so, you know, go ahead. So what I thought overall, I think over the next couple of weeks, the VIX will continue to um, uh, go down. Sure. I was expecting some sort of reaction bounce from that 
2021 level. I mean, you got it, but it was like one um, percent. We got it. We got a tiny one today. Yeah. yeah. Um. The f- the purpose of one of those bounces is that it ends up getting some fear into the market, some bears in, some sellers, um, which the market needs to drive itself higher. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. If they're only buyers, you can't have a uh, higher price. Action. Yep, yep. So the VIX might just trade in a compressed range uh, for the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, what do we close at today? Like 21 spot six, something 21. like that. 21.6, correct. So we're just outside of that bounce area. Um, which kind of makes me think we'll continue to trade in a range slash head lower for the next couple of weeks. Um, lower, like sub 20? Because we haven't really dipped below 20. Like it just, you know. If, if we go sub 20, um, say next week heading into options expiration, I would expect us to go down to like the high 17, 18 area. Sure. Um, because there's just nothing but air between uh, – uh, that 17, 18 to 2021 area. Yep. Um, there's no real support, but overall long term, over like, like, you know, intermediate term, I should say, I think the VIX is just going to continue to head lower. Yep. Um, until it reaches that, like, you know, nine to 10 area. Probably. Um, I mean, nine to know, 10, I mean, though. Like, I mean, that's, whoo, you're reaching, man. Good Lord. But I mean, I mean, think about, look what's going on. The, the Fed is, um, providing ample liquidity, right? It's guaranteed bank loans so that the banks can continue lending money into existence. Um, you know, um, cash is out there. Lending is okay. Sure. The, you know, bonds are, I mean, look, look at 10 year treasuries right now, rates backing off. Um, the dollars still being shorted right now, um, at record levels. So, I mean, like, what are you going to do? Where are you going to put your money? Yeah, Stocks, pretty much. Right. You're going to get like 1%, uh, one spot two off a 10-year treasury. It's a safe investment, right? It, it's that safety trade. Is it an trade. investment really, though? I but mean... can you resist like, <laughs> yeah, can, can you resist 20% annual in the S&P? Yeah. You know, 15, 20%? For sure. Like, no. No. Um, All right. No. Well, Let's move into the next one, SPG. So this one, did, Simon what, Property Group. Did you? What do you want? The six month, the year to date. What do you want on this one? Just go the one year chart. One year, gotcha. One year okay, pull that up. gotcha. Wow. So obviously, being a commercial REIT, um, owns a lot of malls. Simon Property Group uh, took a big hit Whew. during that COVID crash. Big time. Good lord. Um, their business model, in particular, uh, wasn't viewed by most investors as a particularly uh, you know, uh, investable one, but it looks like we're having a sector wide bounce that SPG is going to benefit from. Um, so REITs, uh, are bouncing right now. They're doing okay. What is, uh, they're one of those last value sectors that I think the market on whole has, um, you know, get to rotate into. Did you say REITs? So, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, like, real estate investment trusts, um, particularly on the commercial side, you know, you're dealing, you're taking on risk there. Yeah. Right? Um, you don't really know how overinflated um, that real estate market that you're exposed to is sure. at any given time. Um, I mean, you could if you really dove deep and did the research and, you know, if you know a thing or two about commercial real estate. But, you know, there's, there's already a background, a backdrop of risk. You add COVID, shuts down all the malls, everyone starts working from home, office buildings, done. Yep. Right? Rent not being paid. And yet you have a year later what looks to be a rally. Uh, yeah, you could I mean since Simon Yeah, I mean Simon Property Group. Christmas shopping. Uh, I got gave him a bump start. Yeah, yeah it's it's at a buck four right it's now. Black Friday. It here. looks like it's gonna go test that breakdown candle high at like one ten. Um, and if it gets there, honestly, and doesn't back off uh, immediately, we could we could see an explosive rally. Yeah. I mean, the money is moving into 
the sectors that haven't been picked through yet. Yeah. Um, REITs, that's one of them, right? Um, SPG is one of the larger commercial uh, real estate investment trusts out there. Um, they have connections. And if you think that they're not going to leverage those connections to help, um, you know, regain share price. And I know I'm being like conspiratorial here, but, you know, their CEO is well connected. Um, you're crazy. They're go- they're going to regain share price and they're going to uh, recoup losses. Yeah. You know, I would expect if SPG got back to uh, all time highs. Uh, that would be a stone cold short for me. Well, in the five year Easy. chart, they're up to like almost they're up to like almost two thirty. And here's the thing: you yeah. can't bet against real estate. Any way you look at it, it gets reshuffled around. But all those shopping malls that went down, they're being turned into something else. So I mean, you just can't. Real estate is well. Here's yeah. Here, here's the thing: commercial real estate. I think, in my opinion, and not disagreeing with you, is a special case, um, given how strongly rooted. Um, this work at home trend has become, sure, and you can disagree, right? bro. It's I your mean, chart. It's okay. <laughs> I, I I just I just think that commercial real estate is an interesting space being completely propped up, right, by the Federal Reserve right now. Um, you know, if prices take another another dive, yes, you'll see you know you know interest from like venture capital. You'll see some people come in and buy wholesale. Uh, some of these properties, but like right now they're in like limbo, right? Yeah. Um, they're waiting literally on investors to save them. Um, but I mean, people said the stock market was dead a year ago and look where it is now. Yeah. Um, dead. you know, Amazon, I know, uh, was talking about some sort of partnership with SPG. Maybe they could start uh, buying up some of those, um, empty storefronts, uh, converting them into Amazon, you know, who knows, health centers, sure, things sure, like sure. that, yeah, yeah. or Amazon distribution, points of distribution, I mean. So, all right. So, last one, XLF. So, select sector, right. trust financial? Yep. So, it's the uh, the uh, Spider Bank ETF, right? This one's an interesting chart if you can go to the, pull up the five-year. Five-year, Sure. Um, we have climbed back to where we peaked, um, like what, like 14 years ago, uh, right before the 2008 crash. Well, you said the five year, if I go to all, yeah. Um, the two, so 2007, uh, the big crash in 2008. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're right. We're actually just a little bit above where we were before that. Okay. Um, so why is that interest rates? Right. For 2008 interest rates were, I want to say like 4%, 4 to 5%, something like that, maybe a little lower. Um, and now they're just barely nominally positive. Sure. Right. Negative when you account for inflation. Yeah. Um, on say like a, like a 10 year T bill. So, I mean, banks obviously um, partially rely on interest rates. Right. Um, to make their lending operations more profitable. Um, and when interest rates are low, right, they can't guarantee, they can't rely on that source of income. Yep. And so what do they do? They ramp up their trading operations, their trading platforms, right? Make money on microtransactions on order flow, uh, which is what they're doing right now. Um, some of the bigger banks, Goldman Sachs, uh, JP Morgan, are trying to reach out and expand their depositor base. Um, they're trying to speak hard to millennials, to younger people, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But, you know, it's it's interesting how the XLF is um, back to all time highs right now. Yeah. Can it can it go up? Because, I mean, it's it's, you know, it's just freaking I mean, it's just been straight up in the last like year. The bench, the overnight rate going up right now. Um no, I, I don't think that's possible. The Fed um, can sit on the long end. They can suppress. They are suppressing rates right now. Yep. Um, they can, you know, they're the lender and the borrower. Sure. So, um, you know, they can manipulate rates that way. Obviously, it's to their advantage and right now to the economy's short-term advantage to have late rates low. I think the XLF is the ultimate example of 
of the craziness that we're experiencing right now in the market. And you could look at GameStop, you could look at tech stocks, you could look at, you know, anything else you want, Tesla. Um, but the fact that banks are back to all time highs in spite of their most fundamental source of revenue being like wiped out, not wiped out, but wiped out. I mean, yeah, right? <laughs> for, sure. for all intents and purposes. Interest. Is, is telling, right? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and if that can happen, how do I lose? Sure. Like, you know, like what's a bad company? Sure. <laughs> In that case, you know? All right. Well, with our with our predictions, so uh, the VIX, so you figure the VIX is going to keep going down. Gotcha. Fair enough. So I, you know, I have to, I have to kind of agree with you. This is this is the five day in front of us here. So uh, I, I, I don't know, man. I feel like it's going to hover for the rest of the week, and then maybe it can, maybe it'll go down. Um, I think, yeah, I think it'll trade like between six or not sixteen. That's uh, the the VXX. I think it'll trade between maybe like that twenty spot five to like. 23 area sure and maybe going into options expiration maybe it'll collapse and um it'll set like a new multi-month low we'll see um we yeah. certainly will see all right well of course blsp sndl blue sphere sundial and of course shmp shrimp i expect them all to go up of course um but uh we'll we'll, we'll see how things go any any last minute thoughts before we uh before we get out of here Pay attention to the VIX, right? Um, if we break out of this tightening trading range um, and it goes below 20, um, I would I would wait for that 17 level, right, uh, to take on more positions. And if it breaks above that 23 area, something else is going on. Okay. All right. Well, we're not far from from either one. You know, we're at twenty one point six. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. Well, I guess that's pretty much it. This is Market Peak with Seth and Matt. You'll see us. We'll be back over the weekend with another episode. And uh, really appreciate it for tuning in once again. Hit that subscribe button. What is it down there? There. Yeah. So hit this. One of those buttons. Yeah. Maybe hit the like button by accident. You know. Yeah. And leave us some comments. You know, people, whether you like what we did, whether you hate what we did. We actually got our first thumbs down. I texted you. I was like, dude, we made it. We got our first thumbs Super down, right. dude. Yeah, exactly. But uh, we'll uh, see you guys in two days. Boom.